right right sensor input and based on that you can turn on uh, led you can adjust the brightness of led and second task uh, uh, take input from motion sensor okay the accelerometer okay? and based on that you can control uh, dc motor okay the last one we haven't studied yet but you know that will be uh, covered by uh, next week i think ultrasonic sensor uh, ultrasonic sensor is used to measure the distance from from the current location to the world right? the distance that will be very interesting uh, sensor okay so again uh, that uh, will be uh, studied probably next week uh, next monday okay? and I, I i'm asking you to execute these three uh, different tasks in round robin uh, manner that's it so every one millisecond the first one millisecond you run test one uh, next one millisecond you run task two and next one next one millisecond test three and so on in round robin fashion okay so that is the brief description of a mini uh, altos i i call the mini altos but it is not that you know huge the operating system super simple so three tasks, right? Three tasks are executed in round robin fashion, and each task has one millisecond time slot. Time multiplexed, right? Time multiplexed scheduling. OS is assigning one millisecond time slot for each task, right? First one millisecond, uh, task one, next one millisecond, task two, and so on. So probably you have to do, you know, you have to do this, right? System initialization, the booting sequence, right? Booting sequence, you set up a stack and interrupt controller setup, which will be uh, studied today. Okay, GIC. Okay? Don't worry too much about you know, detail. And also, if you um, get task two, okay, I'm asking you to use triple timer counter to generate PWM output. Now, what is PWM? Pulse width modulation. So like this motor control, right? So every 20 millisecond, if my memory is correct, every 20 millisecond, you are supposed to generate this pulse. And this width uh, is like one millisecond, one millisecond to uh, three milliseconds. I don't know if my memory is correct. Right? Then you know, the angle you want to rotate. So PWM, pulse width modulation. So this pulse width, this pulse width, can be changed very easily with triple time of counter. Where is that? Uh, timer is located. Uh, if you open. Vivado project. Any, any Vivado? So triple timer counter is also one, you know, IO device, right? Like private timer we studied before, right? Very simple uh, function. So any anything you can you can open. <clears throat> Then block diagram. Okay, we have uh, PS. Right. Processing system and the rest. I will go into the programmable logic, right? PS and the rest, right? PS. Double click, PS. Then uh, MIO configuration and IO uh, application processing unit, AP, right? 
So AP, then click on this time. People, these two are TTC. Okay. okay. Then you have three output. Okay, three output from this PS. That should be connected to, to some pin output, some output right? for motor control. So last time we used GPIO, general purpose IO to uh, control uh, DC motor. But now we want to use, we want to use that triple timer counter output. That is PWM output. And I'm providing, um, I did all the dirty work during the weekend. So if you open the page, uh, this one, timer section, TTC, okay? I'm providing hardware and software. Right? So you don't have to do, you don't have to read all the uh, data sheet, right? So reference design, you can just use that and copy software code, right? Uh, everything is you know, provided for you. So check out this TTC. And I updated also this one, uh, the ADC PowerPoint slide. Let me show you. So if you uh, enable the TTC and write code, and I updated uh, how this PowerPoint, uh, triple time counter. So with, by you know, enabling this, right? By enabling TTC, you have three output generated and make it external to connect that into some pin, pin on Z board. Then that is an example you know, code you can, you can uh, download. You, you, you know, you download that uh, zip file, then you can find out this example code. And you can generate this PWM. Right? So, you know, duty, some duty assigned. So, I don't know, this one is like 10%, the first one, 10%, uh, no, 90% duty cycle, 90% of the time. Uh, you know, output is one and 10%. So 10% of the time, this one is high and 90% of the time low, then there is 10% duty cycle. Okay. So you can generate any duty cycle you want, right? So that means you can control DC motor, simply control DC motor. And you, you can check out, the, you know, the uh, data sheet, right? Data sheet is there. Go to which one is which? So, so here, uh, check out this Zinc uh, seven thousand uh, TRM. There is a TTC section. Oh, here, triple time counters, TTC. Only a few pages. One, two, three, four, five pages, six pages and uh, read this data sheet. And at the end of this uh, TRM, you can find out register information, register detail. What kind of registers TTC is providing? What you have to do, what you have to do is you have to touch those registers to generate PWM signal, right? So here, register, here, TTC. Oh, here, paper timer counter. So, you know, compare, compare um, my reference code with this uh, register description. Okay. So 
So any, any question about uh, class project? Okay, then let's move on to the lecture. So interrupt controller. So we have been talking about interrupt and exceptions, right? Interrupt exceptions in computer. Interrupt and exceptions. These two are super important mechanisms for computer system to work. Without you know these two, computer is not working properly. Okay? And interrupt can be further classified into how do you interrupt? How do you interrupt? And software interrupt. So uh, we've been talking about software interrupt. Uh, ARM is providing SVC, supervisor core instruction for software interrupt. Right? And last time, we also talked about one example of exception, right? undefined. Uh, undefined uh, instruction. Undefined instruction. Okay. So we studied software interrupt, uh, instruction, uh, software interrupt, and uh, one one exception example. Today we will talk about this hardware interrupt. Okay. So hardware interrupt is typically generated, typically not always, typically generated from I/O devices. Okay, that's the topic. Okay, that's the topic. Okay. Okay, so you know, you, uh, so uh, same computer system block diagram. You have CPU and memory, right, connected through these buses. Then CPU is reading a machine code and executing, right. And you have a lot of I/O devices, and each I/O device has at least one output connection. Okay, one output connection to notify some event. Okay, something happened uh, inside uh, inside me. Okay. For example, think about this and the network interface card. Uh, you know, using an uh, Internet Explorer, right? You are uh, surfing the web, CNN.com. Then request packet goes to CNN server, right? And response packet comes in to the NIC, right? Then, you know, that response packet is stored inside the buffer. Okay. Then this NIC is generating interrupt to CPU. To say, okay, I have something. You have to, you have to better take a look at uh, the buffer. Okay, I have received something. Right? So each I/O device is generating interrupt, and somehow uh, these many interrupt output should be connected to CPU. Somehow, right? And in case of ARM, we have two physical connections. Right? Remember ARM CPU. We have two physical connection, IRQ, normal interrupt and fast interrupt, two connections. For simplicity, let's remove one. Okay. Let's assume you have only one connection, like that, okay, one connection. The question is, how would you connect? How would you connect these many different outputs, these many different outputs to one input? Okay. How would you connect these many different outputs to one input? Any, any idea? So, Te Tejun, what do you think? How would you connect? Interrupt controller? Bus controller? What is bus controller? Bus controller? Bus controller? What is that? Bus controller. Can can you probably can speak in Korean? That is okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Kiwan, what do you think? So we have, uh, so we haven't studied the interrupt controller yet. So what would be you know obvious connection from from these outputs to that input? What would be obvious you know connection? <laughs> okay. Can you okay. So one obvious connection is just using OR gate. So how about that? Use OR gate and connect each output okay, from, out, uh, from IO device to that input. And that goes to CPU. Okay. How about that connection? What is the OR gate? Uh, one of the input is a circuit. One of the, one of the input is a circuit, then an output is a circuit. And one of the input is one, output is one. Okay. So you know, IRQ you know, goes high, right? So how about that connection? What if we, we use that, you know, hardware system in computer? Do you see any uh, problem or any issue with that connection? I think this is most, most straightforward and simple, uh, simple you know, hardware schematic diagram. Right? And also I think it makes sense, right? That output, Like those outputs are connected and anyway, right? To to that input. So CPU can take that interrupt. Uh, so then uh, what would be the problem? So you see any issue or problem? I can hear you. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Okay, so that is, uh, Yeon Seok said, you know, so you, you don't know who generated the interrupt. That is the one issue, right? So then what do you have to do? So, you know, so one, in, the output is, you know, circuit. Okay, it's output, and all the output is a circuit. So the one of them. One of them asserted interrupt output. Then see if you recognize the interrupt and try to process the interrupt. Then what do you have to do first in the interrupt service thing? If you have that connection. What you have to do is you have to poke around, you know, every IO device has a status register. That guy has a status register, status register, status register, right? So CPU should execute. Memory read instruction in our case, LDR instruction. LDR. Because each uh, status register is memory map. You have to read from the status register and check out some bit to figure out, okay, you generate the interrupt, okay, you are not, then, okay, you have to read through this guy, status register. And uh, in the worst case, assume that you have 1,000 different. 1,000 different IO devices. In the worst case, you have to check out every 1,000 IO devices, then the last one generates the interrupt. It takes a lot of time okay, to check out, uh, check out the event, you know, and also check out who, you know, who generates the interrupt. Right? Figure out who generates the interrupt. The latency, interrupt uh, generation, interrupt occurrence, then you have to execute a lot of LDR, 1,000 LDR instructions, LDR instructions. Then at the end, in the worst case, you figure, right? Okay, you generate the interrupt. That latency, interrupt latency, that is, that is huge, okay? And how do you implement a priority? Okay. So for example, okay, this guy has a lowest priority, then Hyman has the highest priority. How would you implement that priority mechanism? Uh, what do you think? 
priority, how would you implement pri priority mechanism? So you want to service the uh, you know, high priority IO device first, that low priority IO device. So how would you implement that priority? If you have that you know, connection, only the old the connection. Record priority. So you have you know, just all gate, right? All gate connection. Oh, no, what is that? Yes, yes, right? So if you know that timer is the highest priority, you can check out that guy first, right? You read the status register. They can be implemented a little bit easy. Okay? But the problem with that mechanism, that all gate connection is the latency. Also, uh, if you think about nested interrupt processing, that is a little bit tricky. Nested, right? One interrupt is generated. Why you are servicing one interrupt? Another interrupt is generated then then what if okay. so isr right isr you are in the middle of class a interrupt then another interrupt you know generated so here cpsr i bit set to one okay. when you make a transition there is one so using C P S change process state change process state instruction, you clear I B two zero. That means uh, you can take you know in time. Okay. But what if uh, you are in the process in the middle of passing time interrupt? Then you are the interrupt is generated in the middle. Then do you have to take that interrupt or not? Depending on priority, right? If timer has higher priority. You want to ignore that time of time or interrupt. But with that simple connection, how would you check the priority mechanism? So you have all gate connection. So interrupt line. If you you have interrupt, right? That line got asserted anyway if you are generating interrupt. Right? So then there you don't have any choice, right? You clear IB20, then CPU is willing to take interrupt. So you are generate you are processing interrupt for you one right nested uh, interrupt case you are ISI okay. even though you are has a lower priority so we have some you know problem right so lower priority interrupt is processed first right? if you have that simple connection right? so to prevent that uh, that issue okay the problem okay so people is people is using a very special hardware called interrupt controller. Okay. That is replaced by interrupt controller. That is aggregating. Okay. So interrupt controller is aggregating all the interrupt from IO devices and notify that event to CPU. Okay. So the whole purpose of having interrupt controller is what is fast and efficient interrupt processing. Fast processing and efficient processing of interrupt. Okay, let's talk about that. So first, uh, name first. People use some different names uh, to refer to interrupt controller. Okay. So some company is using this terminology, advanced. Uh, let's read this first. Okay, so depending on company, company they are uh, use different terminology. 
So some 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 people use AP advanced uh, advanced programmable interrupt controller. Some companies says just P programmable interrupt controller. Some people say IATC just interrupt controller. ARM is using different name called GIC generic interrupt controller GIC. <laughs> The names are different, but the you know function and the purpose and the functions are you know same or similar. So they just use different names. Okay. And uh, the main function of interrupt controller is is uh, is you know is this main function enable or disable each interrupt source. For example, okay, I don't want to take this interrupt interrupt from this sound card. Okay. I don't want to take interrupt from the, you can control that with enable and disable. Or you can set priority of each interrupt source. For example, timer, okay, your priority is 10. Uh, you are, your priority is nine, for example. Okay. Nick, you are 11, something like that, priority. And interrupt distribution, what do you mean by that? Uh, in case of multi-core, multi-core system, you have, for example, four different CPUs. For example, you have you have two CPUs right, like this. You have two CPUs. Then interrupt generated. Then who do you want to send that interrupt to? Do you want to send, you know, time or interrupt to CPU zero or CPU one? You want to distribute that interrupt, right? So in multi-core system, multi-core system, that distribution function is implemented, right? You want to send some specific interrupt to some specific CPU distribution, right? And then some more intelligence. We will talk about this. So that is the main function, priority mechanism. A priority. Okay. So, what if you know these five IO devices generated the interrupt at the same time? Who do you want to serve interrupt first? Okay. The interrupt controller will determine okay, based on the priority you assign. So, you have to assign, you as a programmer, you have to assign priority for each IO device. Okay. Then, interrupt controller dynamically at runtime will determine. Okay determine the interrupt CPU should service first. And this one is showing uh, Intel x86 uh, computer uh, system, uh, simple hardware structure. Okay. So you have uh, two, uh, two, Okay, you have uh, two uh, x86 uh, x86 uh, processors uh, on motherboard, and you have a chipset, okay? IOH and ICH. And you know how many interrupt controllers are there in x86 based system? Look at this. Uh, these two. Uh, in chipset, you have two. Very old, very classic interrupt controller called 8259. It's more than 40 years old interrupt controller. That is still there, that interrupt controller. Not only this, look at this. You have IO AP, IO Advanced uh, Programmable Interrupt Controller. Okay. So not only that, inside the processor, you have a uh, local AP. Okay, local AP two local APs uh, in one, one CPU whose hyper-threading is provided. Two threads, hyper-threading, right? Two threads can be executed inside the CPU at the same time, hyper-threading. So you have inside one physical, okay, again, inside one physical uh, CPU, you have two local APs, okay? So, you know, the count, how many interrupt controllers are there? One, two, three, four, okay, in one processor. Another you know, four, so eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 interrupt controllers. 
in Excel 6 computer. Very complicated. Okay. So, you know, it is, you know, actually very complicated. And the reason is uh, you want to support backward compatibility. Backward compatibility. The legacy software. This one, A259, is very old. Uh, at the end, this one is 8259. This one. So 8259, this old uh, chip is able to take only eight internal. Okay. So that is connected, cascaded, and final output is connected to, you know, somehow connected, not physically. Somehow, physically connected, but somehow not directly. Somehow connected to internal. CPU. But nowadays you have more than more than more than you know eight. A lot of IO devices. And that 8259 is not enough to connect uh, connect all the IO you know, out. Okay. Nevertheless, uh, Intel X86 computer system still still using uh, 8259. 8259. Why? Backward compatibility. Because some legacy code, 40 years old software still touching registers inside this 8259. Okay, so you don't want to break that legacy code. That is why uh, uh, X86 computer system still, uh, still uh, systems still have the 8259. Okay, so there is one. Then let's talk about interrupt control. This one, someone, please. Okay, this Okay, so GIC, the name, uh, Generic Interrupt Controller, ARM's Interrupt Controller, okay. Uh, um, and there are several implementations. It, it is evolving from version one to version four. Okay? Probably version five uh, is already uh, here, but I, I, I haven't checked that. So in this class, we are going to talk about the first one, version one, because Jink 7000 uh, uh, is implementing version one architecture. So what you have to do is uh, you can you you know check out you check out what you have to do is uh, I posted uh, data sheet read uh, some chapters in this TRM Cortex A9 Sync 7000 and uh, this GIC architecture stack. So if you open this. Uh, so, you know, what you have to do is uh, you have to read what kind of registers it is providing, right? So, check out. Distributor register. So, register. I think there's a map. So, so those are registers, right? So control register, type register, group register, enable, disable, and priority. This one is important, my priority, and some more. So what you have to do is read uh, these registers, then using assembly program, you can touch, you can throw them, right? So distributor register. So let's talk about interrupt, okay, some detail. 
we will have uh, two, two CPUs. Okay? Uh, two ARM CPUs and this uh, pink, pink are interrupt sources. Sources and green, green is called uh, distributor. Okay. Green is called the distributor. This purple is called a CPU interface module. So you have two important, two, uh, two uh, important hardware module in GIC. The first one is the distributor, okay. green and purple, that is a CPU interface. So using distributor, as a name, right, right? Interrupt sources, for example, timer you are interrupt, that is coming in, and using distributor, you want to send that interrupt to CPU zero or CPU one. So here you can set interrupt priority also. And uh, in, inside CPU interface module, you can, CPU interface, you know, <coughs> one for each CPU. CPU zero has CPU interface module, CPU one has a CPU interface module. So you can do some, you can, you can set, you can uh, program CPU specific uh, function, CPU specific function in CPU interface. Let's talk in detail. That is the picture. This one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Let's go back to the previous slide. Uh, interrupt sources. Uh, interrupt sources. There are three kinds of interrupt sources in uh, in Jink. The first one is called first one is called software generated interrupt. Okay, software generated SGI, and the other two private I/O interrupt. And shared IO interrupt, PPI, private IO. Each CPU has its own uh, IO devices. Okay. Private timer is one good example. Private timer. Okay. Private timer is one good, uh, you know, one good example of PPI. And shared IO interrupt, right? Some IO device <coughs> is shared by two CPUs. So that means you can send that interrupt to CPU zero or CPU one. Okay. And then uh, in GIC, you can have up to, up to 1,020, 1,020 interrupt. So you can have, so you can have uh, this uh, pink, right? Interrupt sources, you can have one, up to 1,020. Okay. So in GIC, only 96, I think. If you add 16, 5, 5, if you add this number, the 96, is it correct? And 26, 86. Okay. So 
Jink is providing Jink, Jink is providing 96 inter sources, 16 SGI, and five private IO interrupt, and roughly 60 shared buffer interrupt. So the one important thing you have to remember is the ID is already assigned to each interrupt source. This ID. Okay. Software generated interrupt. You ha you have to use number zero to fifteen. Private I.O. interrupt 16 to 31. Okay. And shared uh, I.O. interrupt 32, that, that number. So ID is already fixed. This one is um, block diagram. Okay. So again, uh, this pink is interrupt, pink are interrupt sources. And green, green is distributor. Look at this, right? CPU zero distributor. You have a private IO interrupt. Okay? That is all, all, always you know, connected to CPU zero. Private IO, right? So you have timer, some watchdog timer. Same thing goes to here. Private <coughs> IO, private you know, interrupt. That is connected to CPU one. But you have to go through this new distributor. Okay. So two private interrupt. This one TPI, TPI, TPI for CPU zero. This one for CPU one. Okay. Then shared I/O interrupt. Okay. Uh, that is going through some distributor. Right? So that interrupt can be routed to CPU zero or CPU one okay. through distributor. So some big picture. Okay. okay, so SGI, don't be confused. Uh, SGI with software interrupt. So SGI, software generated interrupt. So it sounds like software interrupt, but it is not. Okay. So that interrupt. <clears throat> That interrupt is delivered, del delivered to CPU through that through that IRQ FIQ connection. So to generate interrupt, you have distributor, distributor, and CPU interface, interface module, and CPU. In ARM, you have IRQ. FIQ correction. To generate SGI, you have to program some register. So SGI register. It is that simple. Then that information is delivered through that connection, that IRQ or FIQ connection. So that should be classified as you know, hardware interrupt. Hardware interrupt. So don't be confused with SVC instruction. Supervisor code that is a software. Uh, so today, uh, let's uh, skip this. Okay, we'll come back to SGI, and we have more, but we have more, more important topic to discuss today PPI because that will be uh, that will be used in class project and also assignment too. Okay, so private peripheral interrupt. First, then we'll come back to SGI. This one, this one. Dongnam, can you please? Okay, not much to read, right? So you have five uh, peripheral, peripheral interrupt, PPI. And ID is already fixed. Okay, ID. Okay. okay. So you look at this. You have a global timer. ID number 27, FIQ 28, 29, 30, 31. So you have five interrupt sources, private IO. So today we will talk about this private timer interrupt. 
and SPI, uh, we can skip this. Let's see. Uh, to, you know, to touch distributor and CPU interface. Okay, so you that is a base location. F eight F zero one hundred and F eight F zero one thousand distributor and CPU interface. Distributor registers and registers in CPU interface. So base location. So here you have how big space. 10021FF, that means 256 byte. Okay, so 1002, 13Fs, that means 4K, 4K byte for the distributor. Okay, so distributor and CPU interface, that is the main this one. Himin, please. Okay, so that those those are you know main uh, registers uh, that distributor is providing. So take a look at this first one. Uh, globally enable or disable, right? Using this control register, you can enable, enable or disable distributor. If you disable, then no forwarding, right? Interrupt will not be delivered to CPU. And second, enable or disable each interrupt source. Okay. So for example, you can enable time interrupt. You can disable UART interrupt. Okay. Individual interrupt, enable, disable. And priority. Okay, you can set priority of each of each interrupt source. So GIC can have up to 1,020, right? GIC can have up to 1,020 interrupt sources. And for each interrupt uh, arm, uh, you can arm, uh, you use 8 bit to specify priority. Okay. So eight bit, eight bit priority for each interrupt. For each interrupt, and uh, one you know thirty two bit register, one thirty two bit register, four byte register. Uh, here that 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 you know eight bit one byte is for ID number zero. This one is for ID. Number one, this one ID number three. Interrupt priority, you specify priority of in, uh, each interrupt source. Then how many registers you should have to specify interrupt for 1,020 sources? So for easy math, uh, let's, uh, let's use this number, 1,024. Divide by two, four. Then there is 256. You should have. 256 registers to specify priority for each interrupt source. That many you know, registers, right? So you can you can find out that information in the data sheet. Okay. So priority and target because of distributor the interrupts is coming in. When it comes to SPI shared I/O interrupt, which CPU you want to send that interrupt to? Right? Distribution. Target. You can specify the target. And edge, uh, edge trigger, level trigger. Don't worry too much about this. Okay. And this one, grouping. You can group each interrupt source as a group zero or group one. And then what you can do is group zero. Group zero, you can send it to you know, IRT connection. Group one, probably you can send it to uh, FIQ. Okay. So you have two connections. 
So there is distributor, okay? And there is a register map. You can check out this table in the data sheet. Distributor. And how about CPU interface? It's popular. It's popular. Uh, this one, Jisong. Okay, so the first register is in the enable, right? You have to enable CPU interface module before the interrupted CPU. And second register, and third, acknowledge and end of interrupt. These two registers are typically used uh, for hand shaking, hand shaking of hardware and software, right? Something like this. Uh, Interrupt is generated. So interrupt is generated through this IRQ. So line is asserted. Then what you have to do is in ISR, interrupt service routine, you are supposed to read from, read from CPU interface, that acknowledge register. So read, read that acknowledge register. Then what you can do, so what it contains is the ID number. ID number. So each IO device has ID. Right? So by reading this technology register, you can figure who generated it. So it contains you know, that information, ID information, who generated it. So, so you know, ISR, right? ISR read, uh, read technology register, then some processing at the end, uh, you update end of interrupt register, right? The same information, the same ID should be written to end of interrupt. So in CPU interface, you have EOIR. So at the end, you update the EOIR. Then interrupt uh, controller nodes, okay, you are done. You are done processing interrupt. So it's like hand shaking, right? So read, okay. CPU, uh, how do you really update that information? How do you, right? The software, you have to read the information. At the end, you update end of interrupt. Then hardware, hardware, by the time, how do you know? Okay, you are done. Then I can send you another interrupt if, you know, if the, some interrupts are pending. So, Technology register and of interrupt register, those two are very super important. Priority mass, meaning uh, you know, threshold. If the priority is higher than the threshold, I can take the interrupt. There is a limit, right? So here, for each CPU, you can specify the threshold, priority threshold. If the threshold priority, right? so interrupt is coming in, priority is higher than the threshold, then I can take interrupt. If the interrupt uh, priority, if priority is lower than threshold, then I'm not going to take priority mass. And we will talk about that. Pending interrupt is also. So those are register map. You can take a look. So priority, this one. Let's read this and I'll show you. This one, Queen, please. Okay. Okay. So ARM is using 8-bit priority, okay? 8-bit priority as mentioned. Then in Cortex A9, so if you can read, 
cortex i9, uh, you can, uh, depending on implementation, you can fully utilize 8 bit or you can use only 4 bit. But you know, cortex a9 uh, is using 5 bit version here this time. So you are not using, you are not, you are not using this full 8 bit. 8 bit to specify priority. You are using just, you have to use only 5 bit. So 3 bit, 3 bit is not used, 3 bit is not used. Only 5 bit is used to specify priority. And the important thing, one more important thing is lower the number is higher the priority. Okay. Lower number, higher priority. So zero, zero means zero. If you specify zero, highest priority. Okay. All ones, then lowest priority. Okay. All right. One. Mm, that is the priority register. So as mentioned here, uh, eight bit, eight bit. 8 bit is used to specify priority for each you know, IO device. Okay? So ID number zero, the priority is like number 10. Okay? ID number one, okay? number 11, 12, something like that. You can specify. And priority mask register, filter, right? So the lower, this one, priority mask register. So that is specifying a threshold. You can specify a threshold. Okay, let me show you a demo okay, at this point. Oh, uh, this one, private type of interrupt. Example, oh, this one, second one, okay. So, private type of interrupt. So, I created project. Check out this. Uh, my own, right? My own interrupt vector table. Okay. So, to use my own, you have to set this V bar register. Okay. And here, uh, we I have only one. Interrupt service handler ISR. Okay? So zero offset zero four eight one zero eight C. Okay, C C one zero one four one eight. Right for IRQ interrupt handling. Okay? So IRQ ISR okay? is yeah ISR. Okay? So take a look at this initialization code. So using CPS instruction, uh, disable interrupt. Because I want to set up, I want to set up interrupt controller. So before uh, setting up interrupt controller, better uh, disable you know, interrupt. CPU is not taking interrupt, okay? And stack setup, stack pointer. Change CPU to IRQ mode. Then initialize R13 with, with the stack, okay? 13 supervisor mode and set up. And after that, enable, enable interrupt, right? And here, GIC setup, interrupt. Mm, I'm just reading, I'm reading this one, uh, ID, I think ID register. Okay? And then the type register, so binary point register, and important thing, this one, distributor control register. Let me show you. So this one, the control register, global enabling, right? global, global enabling. 
I'm not sure I have register information in page. Okay, you can check out this data sheet. So first one. So let me show you just one register because I don't I, I don't you know, too too many you know details too de too detailed right uh, 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 control register you need to enable that bit right for that you know I you know uh, store one to R two then uh, execute store instruction okay enable right? I want to program this bit to one okay, this bit and set set and enable register uh if, if, if you remember the private timer that i o uh id number is 29 if you remember this one id private timer id here 29 so you need to touch that specific field enable and disable set enable uh, register so okay so one bit each right enable disable check out the data sheet right but in here 32 bit register the first bit is for id number zero second bit for id number one and so on the last one id number 31 so to enable id number 29 private interrupt 30 20, this one this bit you need to enable this one, this one to one. So that is why I did this shift operation. One, uh, 29 bit shift the left. Okay. Then do all operation then store. So I program. Okay. The priority, priority register. So I need to touch priority register number seven. So priority, priority register register number zero, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I, I need to touch this seven because uh, uh, register number zero, uh, you can program priority for ID number three, two, ID number zero. This one, uh, seven, two, four, and so on. You can, you can do, you know, you can do this, then seven, uh, so eight registers, right? So sorry, two. Sorry, two. 20, 31, I number 31, two, 28, right? So here, you need to program second byte. This one is 28, this one, 20, 31. So second byte. Okay. Uh, this one, that is a priority. Okay, priority I set for private timer, 10 AP shift to, you know, write to this location. And I want to, I want to write 10, next 10, yeah. Okay. That is priority for uh, uh, private timer. Mm, so distributor, if, so distributor setting is done. Okay, so D, D, okay, distributor. D, 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 that thing is done. Then control 
CPU uh, interface module, okay. uh, controller, control register, enable, okay. And then priority mask, you need to uh, specify the threshold. Here I'm specifying the lowest priority, okay. That means, that means what? Uh, I can take whatever, uh, you know, I, I can take any interrupt you are sending, sending, right? That is what uh, it means, right? The lowest priority threshold is the, the, the lowest number. Okay. Then a GIC setup is done. Then private timer setup. Okay. The same, you know, configuration we used before, right? Uh, timer register. Okay. Uh, the prescaler stuff, right? Enable auto reload desktop. Okay. And then you can you, you check out, you know, check out you read, you know, counter register to, to, to see if you know uh, timer is really you know counting down. Okay. Then you are uh, you are doing, you know, you are you keep executing this uh, uh, forever loop. Okay. Then while you are executing this forever loop, then interrupt will be generated. Then what that what will happen? Then what happens is, uh, you know, CPU will read from that that location. Okay. Then execute uh, the ISR. So let me download it to the board. So any any question though? A little bit fast, right? So before the midterm exam, we use the polling method, right? Polling, keep checking the status register, okay? To check out the countdown, but now interrupt based. So stop here and then press F5. F5, stack setup, okay? Quick bar setup, okay? Then interrupt controller setup. Uh, you can check out. Uh, the registers right here, MP code, you can see it. Registers in interrupt control. This. Uh, interrupt control, register, pending, a priority mask register, okay. binary point register, acknowledge register, end of interrupt register, and so on. Okay. You can check out you know, registers. Okay. Let me execute this. Just reading this, then distributor enable. Okay. And 29. Speed. Private time interrupt enable. And I set priority to 10 for private timer. CPU interface enabled. Okay. Then threshold setup. Lowest priority. I can take anything. I can take any interrupt. Now priority, uh, sorry, private timer setup. Okay. So now reading. Then, then you can see countdown in R02, R for register. Counting down, right? It's counting down. Then probably I want to set, uh, let me, let me check, let me, I don't want to type, no. I don't want to type F5, right? This forever loop, right? I don't want to type F5 for a uh, thousand times, right? So let me keep, let me press F8. Then before that, set breakpoint here. Okay. I set breakpoint here, right? So press F8, then, CPU stops here. Okay. Then <clears throat> uh, IRQ, ISR. Okay. So uh, pushing general purpose register to the stack. Then you are reading acknowledge register. Check out this. Okay. So you can check out ACK register from this register pane. Where is that? Uh, acknowledge register, right? So, acknowledge. Okay, you 
you press F5, then R3 register. Then what do you expect? Technology. Uh, ID number, private timer ID. ID is 29, right? So 29 is supposed to be stored in R3 register. We are using technology. So ID number 29 supposed to be stored. Let me press right. ID, right? 29, 1D in hex. 29, this one. Press F5, toggle LED. Then clear uh, the sticky bit. If you remember private timer, you are supposed to clear the sticky bit, right? So using store instruction, clear that. And at the end, at the end, uh, you have to, you are supposed to write EOIR register. That means that means that, that means what? IS uh, CPU executed ISR at the end. You update EOIR. Then you are informing uh, this uh, hardware. Uh, informing this hardware of that uh, you are done, you are done, right? You are done processing interrupt. Five, okay. okay. So EOIR, then you are done. But before that, look at this. RPR means what? RPR means uh, running priority register, RPR. So here, inside the CPU interface module, you have RPR register, running, running priority register, running priority. So uh, what, uh, so CPU is servicing, uh, servicing interrupt with that running priority. So we assign one zero. Uh, for private time, right? One zero. Right? So that is why you have here one zero. That is running priority. So here, remember. So we set ten in hex to uh, private time. Okay. okay. So F. So then, if I press F five. You are updating EOIR, then probably running priority that will be changed. Why? Okay, FF. Okay, that is changed to some some value because you are done. Then return back. Okay, so then the time auto reload mode, right? So press F8. Okay, so you stop here. Then let me press F8, then LED will be toggled like this. Okay. Press F8, then stop there, and LED will be toggled like this. Okay, a little bit uh, confusing, right? Because too many things are popped up, right? So I'll uh, talk, I'll repeat, I'll repeat the explanation uh, <clears throat> next time uh, with this example again. So what, uh, uh, by the way, any, any question before we go? Okay, that's it, that's it for today.